I kind of feel like a skater boy. He was a skater boy. It's like I feel like I know what Avril Lavigne has been singing about this whole time because I look like a skater boy. Wow, we love that for me. Well, hello, peoples of the internet. My name is Kevin, and welcome back to another video. Okay, guys, so for today's video, I have got a reading blog that I'm very excited about because this is a book that came out back in May that I have been... Oh, wait, was it May or June? Oh my god, if it's May and it's taken me this long to finally read it, that's concerning, but also relatable because I do that with every single book. I just said I found that relatable, so am I relating to myself? Question... I'm confusion. But anyways, like I was saying, I think this came out in May and like it's taken me this long to finally read it. That just speaks volumes. I am just the pure definition of a booktuber who says they're excited about reading a book and then doesn't read it for a while. But anyways, we are reading The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes, which is the Hunger Games prequel by Suzanne Collins. If you guys do not know, this is basically the new Hunger Games book. This takes place way before the events of the original trilogy. The main character also in this book is a young President Snow. And if you read the original Hunger Games series, you will know who President Snow is because he is the villain. So this is basically like a villain origin story. That's what I'm kind of hoping. I haven't watched many review videos, actually none. I haven't watched any review videos or read reviews about this book yet. All I have seen is like people on Twitter when they're sharing what they rated it on Goodreads. I'm seeing some people give it like two stars, some people give it five. Like it's very mixed. Some people seemed to have loved it and then some people seem to have hated it. So I'm nervous to see where I'm going to fall because if you don't know, I am a huge Hunger Games fan. The Hunger Games is one of the very first trilogy I ever read before joining BookTube and I found it because of BookTube and my cousin. Like that is how I found it. So like I love the Hunger Games. It has a special place in my heart. I love the books. I love the movies. And so I have high expectations. So I really hope I'm going to enjoy this one because I just love the Hunger Games world and it's just such a nostalgic book to me and yeah it just reminds me of like the old days of like reading classic YA books like Divergent, The Hunger Games, all of them it just ugh, I love it so much. So I'm really hoping I am going to like this book so let's all hope I will. So anyways, for this vlog, I am going to be talking about spoilers. I wasn't sure if I wanted to do this video as a spoiler filled video, but when I talked about doing this as a video in my live show, everyone said that they wanted it to be a spoiler filled video. So I will be sharing spoilers. So that is your warning. This video is going to contain lots of spoilers because I'm going to talk about everything that's happening here and I will react to everything. And yes, it is time to go start reading and I really hope I'm gonna like it. Okay guys, so I have actually started reading. I forgot to vlog when I started, but I have already started. I'm just sitting in my little reading nook in between my bookshelves, so if you're wondering where I am. And I am up to page, I'm not very far, <laughs> not very far. I'm on chapter two, page 22, you know, living it up like Taylor Swift said. Nothing has really happened so far, but the chapter did end on like a cliffhanger kind of thing. But also, I cannot figure out how to pronounce the main character's name. I've always called him President Snow. I don't know how to pronounce his actual name. It's very weird how I'm reading it. I'm reading it cor Coralie Anus <laughs> is how I am reading it. So that's not right. So I need to figure out how actually to pronounce it so that when I'm reading I have an idea as to how to say it in my head. So I'm gonna get my phone out and I'm gonna just type it into like Google Translate and see how it pronounces it because I honestly might sound stupid but I just don't know how to pronounce the name and it's really bothering me. So let's see how this is supposed to be pronounced. Hello? Coriolanus. 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 I'm, I, was, I was pronouncing it right then. Wait. Coriolanus. Coriolanus. Cori Coriolanus. <laughs> Coriol Coriolanus Snow is how you pronounce his name. Basically got introduced to him and it's talking about how he's living in the capital, of course. He's a very young age. I think he's 16 or I want to guess that's how old he is. It actually wasn't said, but I think that's what, how old he is, is 16. And the chapter also started very weird because it was like a big description of cabbage soup. He was like making cabbage soup and like there was literally a good paragraph just describing cabbage. So we love that because it just made me think about 
Fred. I don't know if you guys know who Fred is. Fred was a YouTube channel that existed and oh, it was everything. It was by a guy named Lucas. He has his own channel now, but Fred was like my icon. I loved Fred growing up. I remember watching loads of those YouTube videos. And I just remember in that there was always this thing about cabbages falling from the sky. So like reading that passage, I was just like in my head, oh my God, Fred, cabbages, we stand. And then basically the other thing that happened is it basically gave us like what this whole book is gonna be about, which I do appreciate because I actually really like when a book tells you what the plot is going to be from a very early age so that you know what's happening and you're not like waiting to figure out what's gonna happen or like it just drags. So I'm glad we actually found out the plot straight away. So what is happening is there is the Hunger Games is happening. I don't know which number Hunger Games it is, but the Hunger Games is happening and it's the very first year where they're trying to make it more like televised and like entertaining to watch. President Snow was basically saying how like so far the Hunger Games have been something that not many people in the capital actually watch. But like if you've read the original Hunger Games, you know that the capital people love watching it by the 74th Hunger Games. Like, people love watching it. So the Hunger Games that's happening in this one is, like, the first one where they're, like, going to try and make it more entertaining and, like, televised and, like, do interviews with the tributes before they go out, let people start getting attached to them. And I'm assuming that's where they're going to start doing all the betting and, like, the mentoring and stuff like that. Because President Snow goes to this school called the Academy and basically the students in the academy are like the top students in the capital and like 24 of those students have all been selected to mentor the tributes for the current Hunger Games. So President Snow has just been given the District 12 girl to mentor and that's where like the tea is because President Snow is like one of the top students so he thought he would get a tribute from like District 1 or 2 or 4. That's what he was hoping for. But then he ended up getting District 12. Which, if you don't also know from the original Hunger Games, is like seen as a very bad district. And like no one ever wins from District 12. So him getting a District 12 tribute to Mentor is like... He's kind of shook by it because he's like, um, excuse me, why am I getting the trash? So that's kind of how he's feeling. And that's basically how the chapter ended. So I'm going to continue reading. I just vlogged for a very long time here, but I got a lot of things off my chest and some things we needed to discuss. So I'm going to continue on and I'll get back to you guys in a little bit. Okay, guys, so it's the next day and I'm reading... <laughs> I'm reading more of the... I'm like tearing up. This is so funny. I just was reading it and I didn't vlog because I was just like, oh, I'm just going to read and I'll vlog when I need to update. But... What I'm reading right now is so ridiculous. But I'm like, I'm living for it at the same time. It's it's kind of everything. So basically what is happening. So as I said, they all got assigned who they have for their tribute that they're going to mentor. Like all of the capital children and President Snow. Like he has his, he knows he's going to be mentoring the District 12 girl. He knows that. But now it's the actual reaping, so he's finding out who the District 12 girl is going to be. And so the reaping has just happened in District 12. And this girl named Lucy has been picked to be the District 12 girl. And basically she did something with like a snake to like attack the mayor of District 12's child or something. And then she got pulled up on the snake and then the mayor slapped her. And that happened. And then... This is where it gets so funny. And uh, so basically someone just started singing out in the crowd in District 12, like started singing a song. And then Lucy like full on was like, this is my moment. I have been chosen for District 12, but you know what? I am going to own this stage, honey. I am going to live my best life. So she does, she grabs the mic that they're using to do the reaping and she full on is doing a live performance on the stage. I don't understand what I am reading right now. The Hunger Games and all that series has always been so serious, but like, why is this happening? And like, the lyrics that she's singing is so funny to me. I'm like, this is everything, but it's also so stupid. Like, why is this happening? The lyrics are, thinking you're so fine, thinking you can have mine, thinking you're in control, thinking you'll change me, maybe rearrange me. Like, the, the rhyming is everything. Think again if that's your goal, cause 
You can't take my sass, you can't take my talking, you can kiss my ass and then keep on walking. Nothing you can take from me was ever worth keeping. Like, <laughs> why is this girl just casually having a full on performance on her reaping day? She was like, you know what? I got picked to be in the Hunger Games, I'm about to die. I am going to show them my talent. Like, this is my talent. This is my time to shine. I am going to live it up. Maybe they'll sign me a record label and I won't have to go into the Hunger Games. Like, she is shooting her shot. She's doing her best. And we kind of stand. But it's so stupid. Why is this happening? Okay, guys. So, it is the next day. It might look like I haven't moved since I last vlogged. But, guys, remember how I was a skater boy at the beginning? The hair got cut. We love that. I'm so happy that I finally got my hair cut. It's just great. I know this has nothing to do with the book and I'm sorry, but I've just been waiting to get my hair cut with everything going on. Barbara's finally opened again in Ireland, so I got my hair cut and ugh, I'm just so happy because I hated how long it was. So back to reading. I am up to page 76 and I'm on chapter six. So basically Coriolanus, I managed to say his name correctly because I ended up getting the audiobook so I could understand how to pronounce his name. And also, Suzanne Collins just has this thing with all of her characters in her books. She gives them all such complicated names and like it's so hard to like pronounce them all. Like there's so many other characters in here and I'm like, what kind of name is that? Like, I can't pronounce this. How do you say this name? So I'm glad I have the audiobook now because I know how to say the names because the narrator is obviously saying them. And anyways, I'm up to page 76 and basically what has been happening so far is Coriolanus has been basically spending a lot of time with Lucy, which is his tribute from District 12. And basically she's kind of like a quirky girl. She's like, the not like the other girls like Radio Rebel is shook. That's basically what she is because like she does a lot of singing. As I said, like she did the whole thing where she sang at her reaping, which was iconic. And like when that happened, I instantly stand her from that point. I was like, icon status right there. So when she did that, I loved her anyways. It was random, but I loved it. And so she has like been, like everyone in the capital is kind of like loving her because of the way she sings and stuff. And she's being so friendly to like capital children and stuff. And also the tributes in this are like being kept in a zoo in like a monkey cage. That's where the tributes are being kept. Unlike in the later books, like in the original Hunger Games, they go and stay in like this like nice suite and stuff like that. But in this one, they literally are sleeping in the monkey cage in the zoo. That's where they are. And so basically Coriolanus has been spending a lot of time with her and like all of the camera crew, people around the Hunger Games has seen him interacting with his tribute a lot and it's kind of giving Lucy like a lot of publicity and people are starting to really like her. And so that has been happening. And basically Coriolanus has a friend named Sejanus, I think is his name. Yeah, Sejanus. See, what I meant, weird names. They all just have anus in their name. <laughs> Anyways, so basically Sejanus wanted to swap tributes with Coriolanus because Sejanus has a tribute from District 1 or 2, can't really remember, and he came from that district before and moved to the capital, so he like knows his tribute from like when he used to live in that district or something, so that's why he wants to switch with Coriolanus or President Snow, he wants to swap with him, but President Snow is like, actually no, I like my District 12 girl because she's iconic. So yeah, that is what has been happening, honestly there's quite a lot has happened in the space of 76 pages. And I've heard a lot of people say this is very slow. Like I updated my Goodreads to say where I was and people were saying, oh, it's really slow. It took me a long time to get into it. I'm not struggling with that as of right now. I'm actually quite enjoying this. And I am liking that we're getting to see like a whole new Hunger Games. I'm interested to see who's going to win this. Also, we found out it's the 10th annual Hunger Games, not the eight. I think I said eight earlier on in this video, but it's the 10th. And yeah, I'm just actually really excited to keep reading. And also another thing that I was afraid of with reading this book, I thought while reading this, it was gonna like try and change our perspective on President Snow. But the character himself, Coriolanus, he's not likable like in that way. I don't find him extremely likable because then there's things he's saying that you're just like, I, I don't like you. So I don't think Suzanne Collins is kind of going for like a redemption or like to give him redeeming because we all know President Snow does not deserve redeeming. So I like that it's not making us like the character because 
I was afraid that it was going to be like a whole thing where we're going to end up liking President Snow when we don't like him. But yes, it's not happening anyway so far for me. Okay, some like tea just happened. So I'm on like page 110 or so. And basically what just happened is there was this girl named Arachne, which was another one of the students in this school that had a tribute that was going to be in the Hunger Games and she was mentoring them. She was the mentor of a, the girl in District 10 or the boy in District 10. One of them, that's who she was mentoring. And basically she was at the zoo, like giving him food or something. But then the District 10 boy or girl, I can't remember if it was the boy or the girl, slit Arachne's throat and took her cheese sandwich. Like, one of the District kids for the Hunger Games killed one of the Capitol people before the games even started. The fact that one of the tributes for the Hunger Games killed one of the Capitol people before the games have even started, that is tea. Okay guys, so it's the next morning and I'm now up to page 147. I'm just stopped mid-chapter right now because I want to talk about some things. So basically what has just happened is they have gone to the arena. I don't know what they were going to the arena for. I must have missed when they said what it was for. I don't really know what it was because the mentors were with the tributes so it wasn't the Hunger Games starting. So I don't know what they were going to the arena for but they went there and basically when they got to the arena these bombs started going off and obviously President Snow was in with the bombings and he got injured and Lucy ended up saving his life, Lucy being his tribute, ended up saving him because he had like metal on top of him or something and she took it off or something and stopped him from burning so she saved him. And then also like several more of the tributes died. The two tributes from District 6 died from shrapnel. Uh, then there was like a hole in the arena from the bombs and the District 1 and 2 kids tried to escape out through the hole. The District 1 kids got shot so they're dead. Then the District 2 girl something she jumped into like a river or jumped off a cliff into a river but died from the fall. And then the District 2 boy, whose name is Marcus, he is Sejanus's tribute and he apparently has just escaped. No one knows where he is. So the District 2 boy tribute is somewhere out there. And we have, how many is, five? That is five tributes that died during this bombing and the Hunger Games hasn't even started. And then the District 10 girl that died earlier on in the book. So six of the tributes are already dead before the Hunger Games have even started. What I want to talk about now is like, I know I literally just said, oh, I don't think this book is like trying to make us like President Snow. Like I don't get that vibe. I'm getting that vibe now. Like it didn't even take longer for my opinion to change, but now the way that friendship and everything is developing between President Snow and his tribute Lucy, it's very flirty and I'm like, is there a romance going to start between a freaking mentor and the tribute? Like, that's what I feel like is gonna happen and I just don't know how I feel. Like, it's weird and it makes me a little bit uncomfortable because I'm just like, this shouldn't happen. Like, President Snow is trash. I hate him. And there's like things happening in here and like President Snow is like sticking up for Lucy and like getting her food because she's hungry and stuff and being nice and I'm like, I am not used to President Snow being nice, so why is he suddenly nice in this book? In my head, President Snow has always been trash and he's never been a good person, but now I'm seeing bits about him that makes him good, but then he still says things that are like, he's just sticking up for the Hunger Games and thinks they're a good idea, and I'm like, so you're, you are trash. I don't know how I feel. It's very conflicting. I was afraid that this was what this book was going to be and like to try to change your opinion on him which is what I didn't want to happen because I don't like him. I don't want to suddenly start liking him so I don't know. It's just weird like I am enjoying the story and I'm enjoying what's happening but I just don't like 
President Snow's character are. Okay guys, so update. I am now up to page 206 and basically the Hunger Games has officially began. And also another tribute from one of the districts has died before the games even started. So I don't even know how many there is in here. I think there's 14 going into this game. So yeah, basically the games has started and the guy from District 2 that was missing, they have definitely found him because as they were saying, let the 10th annual Hunger Games begin, the District 2 boy was hanging from a pole. So, they found him. So yeah, other things I just want to talk about. So as I was saying earlier how I said, I think it's starting to make me like President Snow. I am not feeling that way once again. I, this book has me so conflicted. So like, there's things happening now and I'm like, oh no, I really don't like President Snow. He's definitely still trash because He's like romanticizing and objectifying Lucy and it's kind of disgusting and gross because he keeps calling Lucy his girl and because like he's her mentor and stuff so she's his and I'm like she's not an object. She is literally an innocent girl going into an arena to battle to the death. Like it's not something that you should be like oh she's mine. No, not something you should be finessing about right now. So what I think is happening with this book is Suzanne Collins is giving us moments where we get a glimpse at Snow and like being likable and being good in inverted commas like he's not good so good. We get like glimpses at it but then like she likes to remind us straight away who we're reading about and like Remember, he's trash, we don't like him. So that's definitely what was happening, I think, with me and why I was so conflicted because there was parts where like, he would do something and I'm like, oh, wait a minute, that was something nice you did. I'm confused, you're not a nice person. And then we get what I said, like where he objectifies and romanticizes Lucy Gray and I'm like, oh yeah, remember, he's trash. And also there's just random things happening in this book and I'm trying to figure out, do I like it or not? And like one of the things is there's a character in here who got bit by a snake and then she slowly started to turn into a snake. Like she literally started getting scales and she kept mentioning how her tongue was just coming out of her mouth like a snake. And I was like, why am I reading about a girl turning into a snake? I really did not expect the Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes to actually incorporate snakes into the book. And also ballads because Lucy's the singer, so ballads of songbirds and snakes, like the title is very literal for this book. So yeah, that's just things that have been happening. Also some characters I want to talk about. So Sejanus, I know I talked about him earlier, but I actually really like Sejanus as a character because he's a real empathizer and like doesn't understand why the games are happening, doesn't see the point of them, thinks it's just cruel, which they are. So I like Sejanus that he talks about that and he's very vocal about it in his classes with like the game makers and the peacekeepers and just everyone and the president and stuff. He makes it known that he thinks that these games are stupid and shouldn't be happening. So I like him for that because of course they shouldn't be happening. I do think so far as to what I've read, this book isn't particularly necessary for you to read. Like if you are reading The Hunger Games for the first time and you're like, oh, do I need to read The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes? Not really, you probably don't. And this is only me saying this reading 200 pages so far. I don't think this is entirely necessary for you to read. I do think that this book is really for fans. Like if you were a diehard fan of the Hunger Games, like I was, like you loved those books so, so much. I think that this book is entirely for us because a lot of the stuff happening in here and like the political stuff, is just like building more into the world. And it's stuff that like, I think I am appreciating because I am such a fan of the Hunger Games. Like seeing the origin as to when they started like betting on the tributes and stuff like that. Like I'm appreciating those things because I'm such a fan of the original series. So if you're not a big fan, those kind of things are probably going to bore you. The book's probably going to be dragging for you and you're just not going to be interested. So yeah, that's how I think it feels. And another thing why I said I don't know if I'm enjoying it or not because I just still don't know if I like reading through President Snow's POV. Like he's just not a likable character and like as I said, it's making me so conflicted and I don't like that it's doing that to me because I was so solid on how I felt about him. So I don't like that it's making me question it. Like I, I don't appreciate that. It makes me a bit uncomfortable and like awkward to read at times because I just wish I was reading through someone else's perspective, not his because I don't like him. But I am just gonna keep going with the fact that I think I am entertained. Like I'm not bored reading the book so I can't say that I'm hating it or anything like that. A few moments later. Okay guys, so I've just been reading so much more and I'm just gonna say it. I'm gonna come out and saying it. I like this book. 
It's official. I've made my executive decision. I have locked it in, as Chloe would say. And I like this book. Okay? I like it. I can't help it. I'm enjoying it. As a Hunger Games fan, I like this book. So, anyways, I'm up to page 302 now, and I'm on chapter 20. And the reason I think that I'm liking this so much is, as a fan of the original trilogy, The Hunger Games, for years, I have always just wanted another book where we got to see another Hunger Games. Like, we got to see one of the other years. Now, for years, I always thought that book or story could be Madge, which was from the second book of The Hunger Games in Catching Fire. She was in District 4. She won in District 4 several years ago, and I always thought I'd like to watch her games. And then I always thought, no, even like a Finnick, we got to see Finnick's games or Haymitch's, like we got to read that book. I was like, I'm down for that. I just want to see another Hunger Games. And I think the reason I'm enjoying this is because we're getting that. We're getting to see the tent Hunger Games. And also, I believe that this book is being adapted. So that means in the movie, we're going to get another like Hunger Games, basically like another, we're going to get to see another arena and everything happening. But also, we're getting so much of the actual Hunger Games itself, which I was not expecting. Like when I heard about this book and stuff, I thought it was going to be more all about President Snow, which it is but we are seeing so much of what's happening in the arena with the hunger games and with lucy and stuff like that and i just i'm really enjoying all of that but also definitely president snow is still trash because we're getting a lot more insights into him now and everything he's doing is for his own personal gain like he's helping lucy win because he wants to get this prize because he wants to get this scholarship like he's doing everything for himself and then his friend sejanus which is like a friend who actually sees President Snow as his friend, but President Snow does not see him as his friend and is like, really doesn't like him and kind of like sees him as like an annoying like thing that's just there. Like every time Sejanus does something, President Snow is like, ugh, I have to help him even though I don't want to, but apparently we're friends. That's kind of his attitude. So I hate that because Sejanus is such a nice little person and he deserves the world. So he does not deserve to have President Snow as his friend. And yeah, another thing that happened is basically Sejanus ended up going into the arena. He actually went in himself. So he went into the arena to go and get Marcus, which was his tributes. Like he was the mentor of District 4, District 2. He was, a men he was the mentor of a tribute in District 2. So he went into the arena to get Marcus, which was his tribute's body, and to like take it or whatever. And that was basically not allowed. The game makers everywhere were very annoyed that there was an actual capital child in the arena, because that's not what's supposed to happen. And so they ended up having to get someone to go get Sejanus out. So they got President Snow because they're friends. And so they got President Snow to go into the arena also to get Sejanus. And after a while, he managed to, like, convince Sejanus to come out of the arena. But they ended up getting chased down by a couple of tributes that were in, like, a pack. And then I think President Snow got attacked by one of them. And then President Snow ended up, like, beating him to death. So President Snow ended up killing one of the contestants in the Hunger Games, even though he's not a tribute himself. So yeah, that happened. But both of them ended up getting out of the arena fine. And then what else has happened since then? I'm basically just like recapping stuff to you because if any of you are watching this and you have no intention to reading this, I'm basically reading this so that you don't have to. Also, another thing that has just happened is I think there's only like seven or so contestants left right now. And basically the snakes that I talked about earlier in the book where I said that one of the girls got bit by a snake and she started like turning into a snake. Basically those snakes have now been dropped into the arena and are chasing down all of the tributes. But earlier on in the book we found out that like the snakes won't attack someone if they're familiar with their scent. So it's kind of like how a dog won't bark at someone when they are familiar with their scent kind of thing because they can just smell you and they know who you are kind of thing. So that's kind of how it is with the snakes. So, President Snow saw that they were dropping, gonna drop the snakes in, and he had a handkerchief that belonged to Lucy. So he got the handkerchief and dropped that handkerchief, dropped it into the box of all of the snakes before they got sent to the arena. So now all of the snakes know her scent, so they're not gonna attack her. And basically, the snakes have been dropped into the arena. They have already killed two or three of the tributes. And they're basically like snakes that can run just as fast as humans, which is terrifying. And they have all basically now been like swarming around Lucy as like their friend because they're not attacking Lucy. So like Lucy just has all of these snakes as a weapon to use against everyone. And she's like singing in the arena with all of her snakes. And 
it's iconic. I am just living for it. Like all of this content, like imagine when this gets adapted, how it's going to look on screen. It's ugh. like, I'm so excited to see how that's going to be done. Okay. So I just finished part two and I'm going to move on to part three now. So I'm up to page 323 and basically the Hunger Games has just ended. Lucy ended up winning, which I was kind of surprised about because in my mind, I thought Katniss was the first ever female victor for District 12, but maybe I missed something and maybe there was a previous winner from District 12. I thought like Hamish was the only one, but like maybe Hamish was the only living victor. That would make more sense. But I honestly didn't think there was another female District 12 winner. Anyways, so Lucy ended up winning the Hunger Games. And as per usual, President Snow was real trash about it. Because he was just disgusting about how he had won and everything. Basically, he had said, was that it? Had he really won the Hunger Games? The Plinth Prize? The girl? That's not it. That That's not it. Like, you don't say that he had won the Hunger Games. No, you did not win it. Lucy won the Hunger Games, not you. You were literally just watching, like you weren't actually in there. And then he said that he won the girl. Once again, objectifying her, which is just disgusting. Anyways, moving on to chapter 21. Basically, he has now become a peacekeeper because he won, obviously, but he went into like a meeting with like the Dean and like three of the things like the, for example, the handkerchief that was dropped into the snakes with like Lucy's scent was on a table. So I'm like, do they know he cheated? I don't know. Okay guys, so I'm in bed now and I'm up to page 410, chapter 26. And I just wanted to do some updates because on page 383, something happened that made me so excited because it just makes me really happy. Okay, as a fan, it makes me so happy to see. So before I tell you what it is exactly, I need to give you some bit of a recap. So. Basically, President Snow is now working in District 12 as a peacekeeper. And also, Sejanus is also working there too. And both of them are working there because Sejanus got in trouble with, like, the Dean and stuff for basically going into the arena when he did that time. And he was going to get expelled, but the only way he could get out of his expulsion was if he became a peacekeeper. And also, President Snow didn't choose to be a peacekeeper. Because he got caught cheating in the games, the Dean said, okay, you're either going to get expelled or you're going to become a peacekeeper. So he chose the peacekeeper. It's honestly relatively boring right now. It's very slow. Nothing's really happening. It's kind of boring. That's really all, really nothing much. But Lucy Gray, of course, is in District 12. So her and Coriolanus have met up again and they have been reunited and they're like lovebirds and everything. I don't know how I feel about the romance in this book because I don't like President Snow as a character. Like, I don't want to see his romantic side of his life. You know what I mean? Like, I just don't want to read about it. But the part that I want to talk about that got me so excited is basically when Coriolanus or President Snow was going to see Lucy in a meadow, she was sitting in the meadow with her goat and she was singing the Hanging Tree song. Like, we now know that she was the creator of that song that Katniss sings in, which book is it? Mockingjay. She, like, it makes me so happy. I want to cry. Guys, I'm so angry right now. And I'm also kind of emotional. Sejanus just got hanged because he was accused of treason because he was planning, like an escape with all of these other people in District 12 to like go live out in the wild and stuff. And basically, President Snow, or Coriolanus, ended up using a Jabberjay to record when Sejanus confessed that he was going to go do this. Like he said, oh, I'm going to do this. I needed to tell you because you're like my best friend and I trust you like a brother. I just want you to know that I'm planning this like escape with all of these people um, and all this kind of stuff. And President Snow recorded it all on a Jabberjay and then sent that Jabberjay to the capital to like basically be a snitch to Sejanus and like tell on him basically. And then because he did that, he ended up getting his friend, emphasis again on friend, hanged. I hate President Snow so freaking much. Literally, one of my only favorite characters from this book just died. 
And this is why I have trust issues. My favorite character always gets killed off. Okay, everyone, so I have finally finished the book and I think I'm gonna give this a three out of five stars because the last 200 pages of this book were so boring. And then of course the Janus died, which I'm still upset about, but it's fine. So yeah, nothing else really happened apart from Lucy Gray finding out that Coriolanus was the reason Sejanus got hanged and she basically ran away from him and is nowhere to be found. We don't know where she went. Is she okay? What happened? We don't know. It's all unknown. And then Coriolanus ended up passing his exam because he did an exam as a peacekeeper. He ended up passing it. He went back to the capital and then got offered to go to the university that he wanted to go to. And then Dr. Gall, who was like the head game maker, was very happy with him and stuff. And then it just like ended and just went to college basically. And yeah, <laughs> that is it. So yeah, the last 200 pages were very boring. Nothing happened. It just dragged. I feel like this could have been a lot shorter. And for that reason, it really lowered my rating because I feel like where part two ended with like the ending of the Hunger Games was such a good end. And then part three, it just didn't really go anywhere apart from the only thing that really happened in part three was Sejanus died. And that's not a good thing. It was a sad thing, but that's pretty much all that happened in part three. And yeah, it was just boring. Didn't love that part. So it definitely lowered my rating. So overall as a whole, did I enjoy this book? Yes. Did I love this book? I think it was the best thing ever. No. Did I absolutely despise and hate it? Also no. But I do think that this book in particular, I would only recommend it to people who are diehard fans of the Hunger Games because I feel like this book is made for us. So if you are not a big, huge fan of the Hunger Games, I don't think you're gonna like this book. I don't think you're gonna appreciate some of the things that I got excited about reading. So I understand why some people are not enjoying the book and finding it very slow, boring and draggy all makes sense to me if you're not a diehard fan. But if you are a big fan, I think you will enjoy this book and like it as much as I did. If you go into it with low expectations, hopefully you will get a lot more out of it. I had my expectations a bit too high and I probably should have lowered them seeing the mixed reviews, but I didn't and I look like a clown now, so love that for me. But yeah, that is it. And I do think that this is probably gonna make a better movie than it is a book. So I am looking forward to seeing the movie when it gets adapted and Yes, that is it for reading this book. And I have basically read it so that you don't have to. I hope anyone who is watching this who does not want to read the book is satisfied with me sharing everything that happened. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know down below in the comments if you have read the book and what you thought of it yourself. And other than that, I shall see you all next time in my next video. So goodbye guys.